This is a empties, an empties, an English grammar. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm doing a video that I've never done on my channel before. It is an empties video. So uh, products that I finished up and would I repurchase. So you know when you see beauty bloggers and they're like, oh, these are all the products that I've finished and it's in a beautiful basket and everything's really well maintained. This is me. <laughs> this is my love for simple skincare water. How many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six. My favorite micellar water, I find that this removes my makeup as well as any micellar water. It's cheap, it doesn't have a funny smell, it doesn't sting my eyes. Have I repurchased? Yes, I will repurchase. Got one going here right now, got a few at home, love it. Next we have some Garnier micellar water. So this is the one with the pink cap. I've got two big ones and a little one. Really enjoy this one also. The only reason that I prefer the simple is sometimes, just on rare occasions, I notice a little bit of foam when I use this one. It's not a big deal, I'm gonna wash my face afterwards anyway. I tend to buy this one because it's got a really big bottle. So you don't have to constantly be buying it every week. I would recommend it and yeah, I would repurchase. More micellar water. <laughs> So this is the Bioderma. I have uh, three of the pink cap and one of the blue cap. I don't notice the difference between them, to be honest. Maybe the smell. I think the blue one actually had a stronger scent. This was my first micellar water. I really enjoy it. It's very effective. It's quite expensive and I can't see, you know, any difference in effectiveness to the simple and that one's a hell of a lot cheaper. I would repurchase the Bioderma in the instance that I couldn't find the simple or the Garnier. While we're talking about micellar waters, here is my favorite brand of cottons. This is just the Swispers round cotton pads. I buy these at Coles or Woolies. They're fabulous, they don't fall apart. I've tried some expensive cottons before. I tried the Suku ones, I did not purchase them. They were part of a gift with purchase. Those just fell apart on me. Honestly, I think these are the best thing cotton wise. Good cotton. This. This is actually a body wash, but I use it as my facial cleanser. I've gone through two industrial size tubs of facial cleanser. I think we can say that this is love. The La Roche-Posay Lipica Syndet. I've used this for years and years and years. Occasionally I stray and I always, always come back. It is a fabulous basic cleanser. It's like a gel consistency and it does have a minor foam. So if you're anti-foaming cleansers, um, probably give this one a skip. Uh, but it's a really great budget option. Even if it was triple the price, I would still pay it. Love it. I have a mask. Uh, this is the Glam Glow Thirsty Mud and honestly, I haven't even finished this one and it's the mini size. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. It did nothing. It was just like a gel. I feel like I've missed the point of this entirely. <laughs> I have two exfoliants, the first, uh, the Stratex Red Box. These are like little pads. Oh, look at that, I've got one in there that's gone crusty and dry. So it's a pad that has a, a solution on it. You apply it to the areas where perhaps you get congestion or dullness, and it uh, works via a chemical action. So it eats away the very top layer of your skin, leaving it brighter, less congested, all that good stuff. Really cheap really effective, also great for back knee if you've got blemishes on your chest or ingrown hairs, I've used it for that, good stuff. Oh yes, 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 yes. The Sunday Riley Good Jeans. At some stage I lost the pump action, so at the end I was like scraping out, trying to get every last bit. This is my all time favorite chemical exfoliant. It is the only one I've found that I feel exfoliates my skin and brightens my skin, helps with texture, but it doesn't feel as though it's depleting my skin. If anything, my skin feels more moisturized and plumper on the nights that I use this. So I do apply it uh, to my face, just my T-zone, before I go to bed at night. And in the morning, it's like new skin. I feel like my boyfriend would want me to mention this. It does have a, a bit of a sharp smell. I personally don't find it offensive, but he hates it. He hates it with such a passion. Super expensive, so expensive. Would buy again and again and again. Okay, one more skincare product before we move on to makeup. These are the Mandom Barrier Mask, the Barrier Repair Mask. It's the one with the baby on the front. I find it to be really hydrating. I will put it on uh, before I go to bed, read a bit of Kindle, remove it, and then pat in the excess. Go to sleep, and honestly, it is a lifesaver 
if I'm having a particularly dry, flaky week, really beautiful. Also, it smells like soy milk. And studies suggest that uh, soy milk is the best thing in the world. I don't make the rules. Would I repurchase this? Absolutely. So many mascaras. The L'Oreal Mega Volume Miss Manga. This one had a funny wand. It's like a pyramid wand. I did not like this at all. Uh, I was expecting to like it because I'd heard so many great things. To me, it gave me three very large lashes. Benefit Roller Lash. This is another one I just don't get it. I don't see what people are seeing. I feel like mascara must be very personal. Uh, this, it gave me a lot of separation, but not a lot of volume at all. Yeah, my, my just sad, just sad lashes. Uh, would not repurchase that one. The Fairy Drop Scandal Queen Mascara, I love this. Uh, this is a waterproof mascara and it has fibers in it. I'd say this is one of my favorite mascaras of recent times. I would repurchase that and you can get that from Cult Beauty. La Volume de Chanel, I've gone through like 10 of these samples. They keep giving me samples every time I go to the counter and I'm not complaining. This is one that I imagine would go terribly wrong on some people. It's very volumizing and it coats the lashes like, whoa. I love it. It's one of my favorite formulas. If you're looking for volume, I recommend, yes, I would repurchase. Oh, I love this one, the MAC Hot and Naughty Lash. So it has like two wands, so you can take it out on the pink side and that uh, is quite a lightweight mascara. So it gives a lot of separation, really fluffy, beautiful lashes. Love that when I'm using false lashes to bind the two together. And then I didn't even realize this until Sharon showed me. You can open up the purple one and that's a very dramatic mascara and it really loads up on the lashes. I love this mascara. I will repurchase ASAP. I don't want to throw it away, but you know, it's kind of a bit old. I've decided to uh, keep some of my manky lashes to show you. Uh, these are from House of Lashes. I love House of Lashes lashes. They are all synthetic, which is my preference. But my favorite styles are the Tigress, which have a very elongated shape. I feel like I can easily skip wing liner and I still get that really elongated eye. Iconic is perhaps my favorite lash ever. I do have to trim them quite substantially, but they have a, a beautiful crisscross shape and they're layered. Um, yeah, highly recommend Iconic. And yes, I would repurchase House of Lashes. Um, I have done, they don't send me anything, I buy it all myself. Lash glue. I've gone through countless uh, duo eyelash adhesives. These are the dark tone, also like the clear tone. About two years ago, I discovered that I am really allergic to bananas, like super allergic, anaphylactic reaction allergic. I turn into a Shrek. I become unrecognizable. I'm going somewhere with this story. Banana is part of the latex family, so anything that contained latex, I very swiftly removed from my collection. Then I moved to the House of Lashes Eyelash Adhesive. This one doesn't require 30 seconds to dry like the Duo. You can pretty much pop them on straight away. The tube becomes disgusting. Like I'm sure this is the design flaw. Like can you see that? Uh, also worth noting that it has the tendency to get into the bed of your lashes and not want to come out. I'll sometimes be picking eyelash glue out of my lash bed two days later. I would repurchase it because it's effective, but it's not uh, without its flaws. Oh, this one irritates me. Okay, the Chanel Illusion d'Ombre in Mirafique. Okay, so I have these in many shades. It's a beautiful, complex cream eyeshadow that's a little bit glittery, but not in an obnoxious way. And you can apply it with your finger and they last all day. Stunning, okay? I've purchased three or four of this shade. It's Mirafique, the black one. And every single time it dries out so fast, it's completely unusable. Like it's gone to some sort of weird paste here and I've decided that enough is enough and I won't purchase it again. So this is the It Cosmetics Brow Power Super Skinny in Universal Grey. I use this right to the end. I find with these very fine brow pencils, you tend to go through them pretty quickly. Loved it. Uh, it is indeed quite an ashy shade, not as grey as the Tony Molly that I've been using lately. It's got a beautiful waxy formula. The, the nib is very fine. Yeah, totally would repurchase that. Oh, you guys, I have a little rant coming. Okay, Beauty Blender Liquid Cleanser, okay? I use this on all of my Japanese brushes because it's a very gentle uh, detergent and it doesn't sud up too much, which is what you want when you're working with really delicate fibers. So, 
used up the whole bottle, loved it to bits, rushed out, bought another bottle, opened it up. What's that smell? The new one, I swear to you, is Bronner's Castile Soap. I hate Bronner's. I hate it with a passion. To me, it smells like rotting coconut. And every time I say this to someone, they're like, oh, but have you tried the unscented version, the lavender version, the mint version? You mean the rotten coconut version? It stinks. <laughs> I feel very strongly about this. Will not repurchase. I've moved to the solid beauty blender cleanser because that one doesn't stink. Onto hair, the Orbe Dry Texturizing Spray. I do really enjoy this product. It's somewhere between a dry shampoo and a hairspray. So you're meant to be able to spray it all over, spray it into the roots, and it gives the hair movement and texture, but it doesn't make it feel gritty in any way. My only critique with this product is I find that the results don't last very long. I would recommend getting one of the handbag sizes because you'll probably need to touch that up during the day. It's great if you're taking photos, like I feel like this is a photo shoot must have, uh, but it is very expensive. I, I would repurchase it. I do use it often before I take my photos. I might like the Chlorine uh, dry shampoo just a little bit. This is a moderate strength, I'd say, dry shampoo. It uh, does leave a white cast, but you just massage the white cast out. It will absorb any uh, excess oil on the scalp, but it's not excessively gritty like uh, the Batiste. It's not gritty like the Batiste. It smells. I don't know, maybe some people describe it as oat. I think it smells like Play-Doh. Yes, would repurchase. Uh, Batiste, I like to keep one in my collection in case I want to create a lot of texture, but it's not something that I use very frequently. This is an underrated product. I feel like more people need to know about this. The Kerastars Powder Bluff. So this is somewhere between the uh, Chlorine and the Orbe. So it's a very, very mild dry shampoo. You can uh, spray it very liberally and it doesn't get sticky or gritty or uncomfortable. I would totally buy this again. Great maybe for drier hair types who uh, don't have a lot of oil, they just want a bit of lift. It's the last product. You and I, we made it, high five, fist bump, can't believe you're still here with me. The Orbe Gold Lust Repair and Restore Shampoo. I also have the conditioner and the mask somewhere. I must have thrown away the packaging. So good, you guys. So good. When I used the shampoo and conditioner in conjunction with one another, I didn't even feel the need to heat style my hair. It's so expensive. I... But when I consider the time that it saves me and the fact that I'm not damaging my hair when I'm heat styling it, can you tell that I just kind of like convince myself, like I'm convincing myself, like it's totally okay, it's totally okay to spend like $90 on shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> I would repurchase. <laughs> I really hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me and having a nosy through my trash. Uh, if you have any questions about these products, by all means, leave them in the comment section and come say hello on Instagram. I'd love to speak to you there. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will speak to you all very soon. Bye-bye. I think I can now safely put these in the bin. Yeah, I can throw away my trash, great. All right, my friends, we're, ge we're getting close, I promise. We're not that close. <laughs>